Welcome back guys. So it is time to step our game up for this video of the high profit, low cost items in woodworking. Today's video, I'll be covering how to make what I'm calling, I'm not for sure if there's an official term for it besides a pedestal leg, but I'm calling this a square turned pedestal leg. Most pedestals that you see are turned on a lathe. This is turned on a bandsaw or cut on a bandsaw. So I'll be going through step by step on how to build this thing. And I told you guys that through the course of this low cost, high profit, make money with woodworking series that we were going to be showing different builds at different skill levels. So I realized that we've been covering a lot of smaller items till now. It's time to kick it up a notch. So I'm gonna show you what you can do with the next level up. But for those that do not have a bandsaw yet, check this video out. It will give you an idea of what you could look forward to whenever you get to that point. As we talked about before, as your business grows and as you grow, you're putting your money aside, you're leveling up on your tools. That means that it's time to level up on your builds. So you can still do the small high profit builds, but you can also do builds like this that are still very high profit that may take a little bit longer. You could say that it will probably take at least a full day to make two of these. The reason why I chose this is because there's not a lot of people out there making these. So these pedestal legs are harder to find and they're massive. I mean, this is a nine by nine at its widest here and it's a big leg. And this is just one leg. But the legs themselves sell. There are a ton of people that are only selling the legs. They're not even putting tabletops on them. So that's what makes this kind of versatile and easier to sell. You don't have to custom make a tabletop. But if you do decide to make a custom tabletop for something like this, they're selling around the ballpark of this. And almost every table that I looked up that had this size legs were around this price. So what makes this such a high profit item is that you can essentially make a set. So two of these with seven two by tens, just standard two by tens that you are going to pick up at your local big box store. You do not have to go to a specialty wood shop to get any of this. This is standard construction grade material. So for this build, it took me six and a half two by tens. And that's for two, two bases, not just this one, but two. So at $13 a piece, that's what they are in my area, $13 and 80 some cents. I was able to build two of these. And again, they are massive and impressive. So my total cost to build a pair of these was around $90. And this is what they are selling for. Yes, and that is an average. I've looked over several places and that's what people are getting out of them because not very many people are making them. If you can get $650 a set, then I'm gonna bump it up to from 90 to 100 by the time you use your glue and your hardware, things like that. $550 in profit, you can't beat that. If you like this profile, head over to my Etsy shop. I'm going to add this profile, everything that you need for the top, base and bottom to the Etsy shop, that's all you have to do is print out the template and it will print out on several sheets that you tape together and it will give you what you need to come up with this. Or design your own, get creative with it, put your own twist to it, make something different. So before we dive into this build, thank you guys for sending all of the photos of builds that you have done to the brag board. If you haven't heard of it yet, I'm gonna drop it in the description, but anything that you make that you are proud of, send me a picture of it. I want to see your projects. Send them to the email that I'm going to put in the description and I will check them out and add them to our brag board. And let me tell you, there has been a ton of response for this. I love it. I'm getting tons and tons and tons of pictures and stories that go along with the builds. Like I said, all of these are going to be printed out. I'm gonna post them on my oversized board in my shop here. And again, that's my inspiration to keep doing what I'm doing. And just for an example, these are some that I received this week. Look at all of these different builds, built by different people across the world, putting their own twist into some of the things that we have discussed. This is awesome. The, the creativity is outstanding. So guys, keep it up. You're doing great. So to my new Patreon members, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Like I said, I'm new at this whole Patreon thing, so let me know what you would like to see. I'm getting some great ideas from people already, and I will continue to build that up. And one last thing before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button if you like content like this. Like I said, we're gonna be going back and forth between larger items, smaller builds, different things like that, and we're gonna be putting our own twist to the high profit, low cost types of builds. So for this entire build, we are gonna be using standard two by tens. First, we're gonna start with building the pedestal. 
So the pedestal is 22 inches long, but I'm going to leave a little bit of extra just to make sure that everything is square. So for the pedestal itself, we will be needing six of these 22 inch long, or in this case, I'm going to leave probably a couple of extra inches. So six of these 24 inch long parts. Next, I'm going to run my parts through the planer just to knock off any type of cupping or crowning that we may have. And for the most part, these two bys are cut just a bit heavy to begin with. So instead of just an inch and a half, they may have an extra sixteenth, which is perfect. But keep in mind that the total thickness of all six boards stacked will have to be replicated by the width. We want this block as close to square as possible. And now I'm just going to rip the sides off of these boards just to match the thickness of all six stacked. This is right at nine inches in my case because of the extra sixteenth in thickness. And it will also allow you to get rid of those rounded over edges. Now let's get this block glued up. And for gluing up blocks like this, you do not want to scrimp on the wood glue. So you see that I'm actually covering every square inch of this and actually reapplying it. I'd rather have extra glue drip out and not have enough glue on and this thing come apart while I'm working it found that a little mini paint roller works best for this and if you're wondering about my little glue bottle there super handy I'll link it in the description so once we have everything with a coat of glue we are going to get this thing as squared up as possible we'll be cutting the ends off here in a bit but this will help just to ensure that I have enough for each side so now we start clamping once everything is good and dry let's go ahead and take our block and head over to the bandsaw and this is where I will cut this down to exactly 22 inches. I need these ends to be square. And I made this template out of a quarter inch ply. It is exactly nine inches wide and the profile is on one side. So that's all that I have to do is flip it over and trace out my profile on the opposite side. And we are actually going to be turning this block over and over and putting this profile on every edge. And what you're seeing me do there is just take a different color marker and kind of, you know, zigzag through the off cuts. The cutting method that I'm going to be showing you today will actually require you to re-glue these off cuts back in. So these little marks, they'll come in handy. And I usually leave one side without the little squigglies because my other three sides have them. And now let's start making sawdust. So basically, just like a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you're just figuring out the angles and the cuts that you need to make to be able to follow your profile. And sometimes you cannot get to some of the angles that you need. So you may have to flip the board completely over and do it from the opposite side. And again, make sure to keep up with these off cuts because we're going to be gluing those back in. And this is what I was talking about. So I'm just using a hot glue gun and putting back all the parts that I have cut out. This will allow for a square edge on our table no matter which way we turn it. And now you essentially just repeat these steps four more times. So while I'm making these repetitive cuts, I'm gonna take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Harvey Woodworking. Since I love my Harvey Alpha Series table saw, I knew exactly where I was going to head whenever it was time for me to upgrade my bandsaw. And I have not been disappointed. This thing is a beast. A solid double T-track cast top. Solid steel rails and worm gears, but it was the attention to the detail that really impressed me. This ball bearing blade guide. This thing is awesome. Both the top and bottom guides have three bearings and they both allow for toilet adjustment double dust ports, and a powerful three horsepower motor. Super handy little tracking window there. Now let's look inside. Micro safety switches and these flywheels are heavy duty cast. These things are monsters. Reinforced steel frame, dust brushes for both the blade and the flywheel, and even a foot brake so you don't have to wait for this thing to wind down. And this extra large high low fence, I mean it glides like butter. 
And because this table is solid cast and so heavy, they even install gas pistons to assist in adjustment. And so when you're looking at a new tool, look at that. Look at that attention to detail because that is going to tell you a lot about the machine itself as well as the company. Okay, so let's recap here. So we have made all of our cuts on all four sides, glued this back together, and now it's time for the unveiling. So I'm just knocking off all the glued on parts. This is kind of like opening a Christmas present. Now that is pretty cool. This was inside of the block. So that's why the breaking apart and the unveiling is my favorite part. You actually get to get an idea of what the finished product's gonna look like. And talking about favorite parts, this is not one of them. So the next step is sanding. And you will have to do a lot of sanding for this piece. So keep in mind, the more intricate that your profile is, the more sanding you will have to do. But this is what it's starting to look like. Looks like I still need to hit a couple spots there in the middle, but we're getting close. Now let's start working on our top and our bottom. So our base and our top board that will actually support the table. And a lot of these steps are gonna be repeat steps that we had done for the pedestal itself. For the base, it will take three boards that are 30 inches long. And for the top, it will take two boards that are 30 inches long. Really the only difference in board prep will be the edge trimming. Since the top of my profile is only eight inches wide, the top board will be cut down to eight inches wide. Now I've actually glued up two sets here since I actually made two of these pedestals, but this is what it'll look like. These are just back to back. Since the edges of these boards are what are going to be seen and we're really not gonna be doing too much more to them, they need to be square and presentable. So this can be done on a joiner if you have one or even on a table saw. Now let's transfer these template designs over to our material. We're gonna start with the base. And essentially you're just turning the material on its edge and tracing it out. So for these, the template only needs to be traced on one side of the material. And the reason for that is we will not be re-gluing any of these parts. So we can just put it on its edge on the saw and cut this out once. And back to sanding. Now to attach the bottom and the tops to this pedestal, we're gonna be using lag screws. So if you decide to make these to sell, you would actually ship them unassembled. So you would just pre-drill your hose, send the lag screws, and it would cut way down on your shipping. So I just drilled four holes into my base, and now I'm just gonna make a counter sink. I also need to pre-drill the base itself so it does not split when we put in these lag screws. So I'm just lining this up, and then I've just set my drill bit to where it will barely make a mark onto the bottom of the base. This will tell me exactly where I need to pre-drill my holes so that they line up with the base perfectly. And for this particular base, I will be using six inch lag screws. And to put on the top board, we are gonna be doing the exact same process. We will not be gluing this in case the customer wants to take this apart. And to attach the top, I'm gonna to be using four inch lag screws. And if you're curious about that handy little jig, it just ensures that I drill a straight hole. I'll also link that in the description. Now here's just a tip. You'll see me add two screws in first. That's all that I'm doing that for is to find my pre-drilled holes. That way I make sure that my bolts are lined up perfectly with the holes that are already in my base. And that is it. Not too bad for $45 worth of material. And the next step's up to you. You can sell them plain as they are. Let the customer do what they would like with it. Or you can build tables. Whatever you decide to do with it, you have built an impressive high profit item using common wood that can be found at all hardware stores. 
Thank you so much for watching guys. But if you've taken anything from this video at all, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and let me know what you would like to see next. I actually have some really cool ideas for a build with a couple of these. And you know how we roll on this channel, it is going to be different. Until next time guys, keep producing, keep putting out the items that you are comfortable with and the items that you have the tools to build. Keep going, keep this momentum going. Build up yourself, build up your skills, and in that process you are building up your tool inventory, okay? We have gone over several high profit builds that you can be setting the money aside to build up and save up to buy your next tool up. So until next time guys, go out there, use the tools that you have to make the items that you can. And if you find an item that you do not have the knowledge to make yet, learn how to do it somehow or another. I don't care if you have to hit up a local woodworker and volunteer just to learn how to do something, do it. It's worth it. Knowledge is invaluable and it's something that you can keep and pass on forever. So until next time, go out there and learn something new, guys. We'll see you.